This is what you get in the blister pack uh, for your £10 or $15, $20. Uh, you get the main body, an arm with a, uh, I, I suppose that's some kind of powered weapon, his power claw with a really, really tiny, this is his thumb. You, uh, that really is obnoxiously tiny. It is. It's, it's ridiculous. I've, there might be. A, you might have a bit of a problem seeing them. So I'll, I'll put the pieces on on the piece of foam. So we've got uh, we've got his claw. And if you, if you notice, there's uh, the triangle of chaos, and uh, I think that's a flamer. There's his little thumb. Now his thumb comes attached to um, a little bit of a uh, little bit of sprue. On there, so you'll uh, you'll need to use your clippers to remove it. Uh, we've also got his his axe, his backpack, which is uh, quite funky. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but this is, oh, this is actually a really good casting. Um, there's usually a, there would be a mould line in the middle of the ribbed uh, tubing. This is a really good casting. Um, you can s sort of see it on the nacelle of, the, of his pack. And his little pet, Hamadra, if you I think that's how it's pronounced, that gives him psychic powers. So, uh, first things first, let's, uh, let's set about removing the tag. And this is where things go horribly wrong and I end up cutting his foot off. Well, with any luck, uh, if you do accidentally cut your fingers off, Rob, we will have a video that we can sell to some sort of TV network for £200. Yep, yep. Right. I'm just going to place him flat. Um, if you if you can get, get a cutting mat, that would be a very good idea. Um, I forgot to bring it. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. Uh, so I'm using some A4 paper, fairly thick wedge, with a flyer underneath. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a lot of pressure to the top of the body and you see where the foot joins joins the tag but you don't have to you don't have to be fast seems to be in the right place. I should point out Rob that uh, I mean as a layman to the whole kind of games workshop model building kind of thing there is a lot more work I think than a lot of people kind of realize in putting these together. There is. Um, I mean as a hobbyist you can throw them together and enjoy the models but I yeah. think for the kind of really nice finished pieces that people see in display cabinets there is a lot of work goes into it that people don't expect. There is. There's hundreds and, and hundreds of hours of work in some pieces. Uh, the Golden Demon Awards, the painting contest especially, um, a lot of work goes into them but you can get a very, very good result uh, with, a, with a minimum of work. Uh, you know, four or five hours for a character would, is ample. Um, this series is about uh, getting your armies out. And if you're going to spend a hundred hours on on a model, you're not. Uh, yes, you're it's going to be good. quite a while before you get your ten point army on the table. I think. Man. Yeah. <coughs> so if, if we if we if we have a look, that's uh, that's gone pretty well. Um, there's still a bit of a bit of a tag there, um, but it's it's reasonably flat, and we'll. Uh, We use the, the flat file to file it flat. Try not to inhale any of this, it's very bad for you. Okay, so all I'm going to do is flatten it down basically.
So that's actually, that's probably just bring the base in. And he's not going to stand unsupported, but that's all, that's pretty much all we need to do. I think a lot of time. this really is about preparation though, isn't it Rob? It really is about not necessarily having expensive tools, but having the right tools, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I say, you only really need one needle file, and that's the half round. Um, the only reason I've got these three files is because I bought the uh, the box set of the, of the Games Workshop tools, so you get you get everything in there. That's the only reason I've got it. Otherwise, I'd, I'd get a half round from a shop other than Games Workshop. Uh, same with the paints. I got that as uh, commission, so you know I, I couldn't have the money. So I, uh, I I got the paint set instead. It's the only reason I've got all this stuff. Um, but you, you don't need masses and masses and masses of, of of tools and equipment. The the bare minimum you need is a, a needle file of some description, ideally a half round, a knife, and a pair of clippers. And uh, that will get rid of the mould lines, and have, you'll have more than adequate preparation for your uh, for your miniature. Right, moving on, we're going to try and find find the mould lines. It's uh, it is a little little difficult. Uh, it's very difficult because I inadvertently got a very very good casting. But there are, there are going to be mould lines on it. Um, if you have a look, it is it's got some little um, amorphe here some little bottles and um, the bottom of that has got uh, some extraneous metal with uh, some pitting on it uh, the same same there some extraneous metal there so it's all it's all very minor so just uh, take a bit of a shortcut if you can see just there that's what we'll be removing this little extra, extra metal. That's from uh, the venting process. The moulds have uh, have vents cut in them, and that's why you get um, tubular sprue. That's so so the air bubbles can get out, and you end up with a with a solid cast. So what you're trying to do is make your cuts match the shape. There's some flashing just underneath. See the roundness and there's an edge where it, it connects. So that's flashing, that's where the uh, where the moulds joined. So we want to try and try and get rid of that. Use the knife for that. And if you if you have mould lines, um, a lot of people tell you, you know, a lot of the Games Workshop literature tells you to scrape away. Um, I find that you don't you don't get as much control. So I use um, the apple peeling method, which is essentially you hold your miniature. You have your blade at a 45 degree angle and you scrape down the mould line and that will gradually remove the mould line um, without removing any detail or gouging into the surface. And as long as you're braced, you don't press down hard, you know, it, it won't it, the, the blade won't slip. So obviously you've got to be careful because uh, a knife is whatever knife is a killing weapon, and these are especially sharp. So be very, very careful. 